Hi, everybody. Yeah. So, still haven't gotten a call. No call. So, I don't know what to do. Guess I still have to play the uh, friggin' waiting game. Um, I would have loved, I would have loved to, um, you know, gotten the uh, phone call by now, but I guess here a couple days ago, I did get the uh, call for the, uh, you know, on Tuesday, I did get the call for the, um, the interview, like about six o'clock at night. So I guess that, um. I can expect the call around then. She said by the end of the day at the latest. My hair looks like crap. <sighs> Healthcare doctor. Healthcare doctor. Shut up. Yeah, I'm on my Facebook. Um, I'm just looking. I mean, there's not really much that I can do, I guess. Just, um, yeah. So. Yeah, so there's that. Um, there's not much going on in my life right now. Um, actually, there is a lot going on in my life right now, but I just don't want to speak about it openly yet. I'm not ready for it to be all over the uh, world. Oh, and I'm sorry. Um, I just realized this. Uh, I was looking through my uh, past videos here. And um, I realized that my apology video or my explanation as to why I have been, I was absent for so long on, on my channel, I put it on my other friggin' channel. Um, it's on my, uh, Yeah, it's on my other channel. I don't know if I can copy and paste it onto this chat right now. Um, if you guys really want to go and see it, I can give you the link, I guess. Um, or I guess, since I have nothing else to talk about, I can talk about it here, right now. Um, so yes, if you guys want to cry, if you guys have a box of tissues handy or, or anything, I can try and sum it up real fast as to why I was gone for so long. Yes, I saw my PJs. Get over it. Um, I know I see that in a lot of my videos. I just wear what's comfy. If I don't have to go anywhere, I just basically wear what's comfy. You know, that's the way the world is these days. Hi. So, back in 2012, at the beginning of 2012, everything was going great. My husband and I were going to celebrate our 10-year wedding anniversary. Sorry, I had to stretch my legs. And, um, and uh, we had planned to go to uh, Holland. Or the Netherlands, as it's also called. Um... Because we had some friends over there. We had some friends that came a couple years before. No, the year before. And we figured that we could get the money saved up in time to go. So, I mean, we had enough money for the plane 
we had we had gotten our passports and i think we had enough money for the plane ticket so we had everything we just couldn't settle on a date as to when to leave and it was causing a whole bunch of uh problems with my side of the family because what we had planned to do with the kids seeing was just going to seeing as it was just supposed to be for me and my husband um we were going to um go we were going to leave the kids with my husband's eldest brother who was living down the street from us at the time and um he uh and he said that was fine he said he didn't mind watching the kids for a couple of weeks as soon as we had uh planned on doing it during the summer you know they did they didn't have to you know bother with taking them to to school and whatnot so but then my mom, but then, you know, of course, you know, I told my mom what we were planning to do. And she asked what we were doing with the kids. And I said, well, they're planning on, we're planning on taking them to Jacob's house. Who just lives down, down the street here, you know, and we were going, you know, and he was going to watch him for the two weeks that we were gone. And she got upset. She's like, well, do you think, you know, I wouldn't say really upset, but she's like, do you think if I came to his house and asked to take the kids, that I could take them to like a close amusement park or whatnot, which, you know, as young as the kids were at the time, I was totally against that. Turn that off, I'm getting hot. And um, I said, you know, and I said, no, I don't, I don't think that's appropriate. That's just not something that, you know, we want want to do just let the kids you know spend these two weeks with their cousins well they get to see their cousins all the all the fucking time my mom says um i never get to see the kids like well you know what that is not really my fault um yes true i could take them to see you guys more often but I, the last time i checked the road runs both ways you know if i can cope to see you you can come up to see me um, there's nothing really stopping you except for your dislike of my husband. That's basically all that's stopping you. And, um, you know, and this dislike of my husband's been going on for 19 years now. So, I mean, it's got to stop. In my viewpoint, it's got to stop. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, he, I've been with him for 19 years. What do you think is going to happen that I'm just going to one day, you know, just suddenly decide, oh, my mom has been right the whole time. My dad has been, no. I understand, you know, they're, I, I get their dislike for my, uh, for my husband. I truly do. A lot of people say I don't, but no, I understand why they don't like him, but I just, you know, but I like him. So, but you know, back on, back on topic. Um, so, so I was saying we got into this great book, huge fight, you know, with my mom and I was like, you know, what, like, I, I can't do this. Sorry. You know, so I was like, no, the kids are going to be staying with, with Jake, with my brother-in-law. So it's, it's fine. And, um, <sighs> and so we thought that we could get, get dates figured out and everything, but it looked like that we weren't going to be able to go. So what I did was at the beginning of May, I got myself a job at a grocery store while I was waiting to get a job at, you know, while I was waiting for my background check to come back at another job. So I quit. So I quit the, so I quit the uh, grocery. So I quit the job at the grocery store when my background check came back. It took about a month for my background check to keep back, which I think is so freaking totally stupid. And their excuse was, oh, Everything has just been slow this month. I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. But I was glad that I had had the job I was working as a dietary aide at the time. So from May to uh, to September, I was working as a dietary aide. Yes, I know it's basically just a summer position, but um, the reason I quit being a dietary aide was because I had decided to go and get my CNA license and uh, or certificate or whatever you want to call it which is a certified nursing assistant here in the united states a cna i know it's probably called something different all over the world but here in the united states it's called a cna so that's what i'm going to call it 
so after I got got done with that, I mean, while I was in college, my two to three week course there, um, I was over at friends' house. Well, I shouldn't. Well, friends that I had made while I was there. They're not my friends anymore. But I was over at acquaintances' houses, studying my ass off. As soon as I got home, I was studying my ass off. I was always on the telephone with said friends, um, doing you know, talking about you know the uh, the worksheet and uh, explaining to them how how to do it because I understood it. Um, helping them with with their homework, them helping me with the homework, you know, it was just basically, you know, nonstop. I was basically what you would consider a full-time student. So, so as soon as I got done with that, I went back to my job at, at you know, I was still considered a dietary aide while I was doing this. I was just taking time off. Um, I was still working the weekends, but I didn't work during the weekdays because that's when I, you know, had caught, had had my college courses was Monday to Friday, eight hours every single day. And, um, so that's why, you know, you can get a CNA license so fast here in, here in Nebraska. Um, I know in other, I know in other parts of the United States, it's actually like a college class. Like only, it's only offered a couple days a week and it's actually a semester class, but the school, the college that I took it at, that's what they did five days a week, eight hours. So it was basically a three week course. So when I got done with that, I went to an open house or, you know, a mandatory meeting, whatever you want to call it, that I had to be a part of. And as soon as I got done with that, I checked my cell phone and it was, you know, the old style flip phones that we had back then. So, you know, we were told to turn it off. So I turned it off, put it in my, put it in my purse. And as soon as I got done, I, I checked my phone to see if I m missed any calls. And there was like, like, I think 20 or 30 missed calls from my husband. And I, and I was like, okay, well, that's pretty odd, you know, cause they were like, you know, one right after the other one was like at 10 o'clock and then 10 01, 10 02, 10 03, 10 04, 10 05, you know, it's like one right after the other. And, um, so I called him and I said, dude, what's up? And he's like, did anybody try and call? He's like, no, I've had my phone off the whole time. And he's like, no one tried to get in contact with you or anything at work. It's like, no, why? What happened? He's like, someone took, he's like, the kids got taken by the cops. What? The kids got taken by the cops. Okay. Why did the kids get taken by the cops? I asked him. He's like, I don't know. So as soon as I got home, I noticed that there was a piece of paper taped to our door that says, uh, you know, the Merrick County Sheriff's office has your kids phone number listed. Give us a call. So I called them and I asked them what's up. They said, Oh, your kids got, your kids got taken to the, uh, Oh gosh, see if I can remember this child detention center where they asked, where they were asking them tons of questions without lawyers present, might I add. Um, and without us knowing about it either, they were asking questions. And um, and I was like, why? Like, why? You know, and I said, and I said, can I ask you why they were taken? And they're like, no, we cannot tell you that. I tell you guys, for those of you that love cops, why? When you have to deal with them in that um, aspect... When they actually get inside your personal life and take away your kids when you have done nothing wrong, why do you like them? Um, so I, so I, you know, called up my husband. I said, look, I called them up and, and, and they said they were taken to the, a child detention center and, um, in Grand Island, but they won't, but they won't let us go and see them. They won't let us interact with them in any way, shape or form. Um, at that time we didn't know about their, you know, about any rights or whatnot. I wish we did, but, um, we kind of knew a little bit about our rights, but not a whole lot. Um, so, and so my husband came back home from work 
and we just sat and waited for the kids. We waited and waited and waited, and they finally came home at about like eight o'clock at night. And I was like, okay, what now? You know, and my husband asked, you know, I'm betting the kids haven't eaten anything except for junk food this whole, the, you know, the whole time you've had them. And they're like, yeah, all they've had is basically chips, pops, and candy. I was like, great. You got them all sugared up and hyper. How am I going to get them to bed tonight? And basically the cops are just looking at us like, not our problem. So, as I was trying to get the kids calmed down from being hyper and everything off of, off of Coke and candies and whatnot, you know, we were trying to also talk, talk to the cops and uh, the cops said, well, the only way you guys can have them back is if your husband leaps for the night. And I was like, what are you talking about? What? What do you mean? He's like, well, your husband has to leave because he's the one that's, um, because he's the one that this whole case is about. And I was like, what happened? No one has told us a damn thing. They're like, well, one of the uh, paras at the school that, at school that your kids goes to, um, called in and said that, said that she saw a great big huge bruise on one of your kids, one of your daughter's bub. And they said that that dad used a belt to spank him. Okay, what? Um, I had bathed said daughter, um, a f you know, the night before and hadn't noticed any bruise. I put her in the bathtub to wet her hair that morning because it was just easier than to, because she, she was, aut she's, she's autistic and she doesn't like water being sprayed from a spray bottle, but you know, getting a cup full of water and dumping it on her head is, is, per is perfectly fine with her. So at least, you know, she could tolerate that. So that's what I do at, at night. I, wa I, when she was living with us at night, I washed her hair and her body and everything. In the morning, I just put her in the tub to wet her hair. So it's easier to fix ladies and guys with longer hair. You, you know how, how much easier it is to fix when it's wet. Um, so that's what I told the cops. That's what we did. You know, that was her schedule. And, and, um, you know, that's the only way I fixed her hair in the mornings. And I hadn't noticed any bruise on her bum. I had noticed tiny, a little bit of, I think I do remember noticing a little tiny bruise on her, on her arm or underneath her armpit or someplace like that. You know, like on this side of her body. And she said that she had just fallen against the slide. And I was like, yeah, I can see you doing that. <laughs> Being autistic, she's not, a, she, at the time, she wasn't a very good walker. You know, she couldn't walk very good. So I can see her, you know, slipping and, and falling a lot. Um, so, um, and that's not an excuse. That was actually her. <laughs> she did slip and fall a lot. She, you know, she learned how to walk when she was basically two years old. Um, and she wasn't really good at it. Um, so when, so my husband left, he stayed in, he stayed overnight. He, he was supposed to stay overnight at my brother-in-law's house, but he wasn't home. So he just went up the road here and stayed at, and stayed at, in a church parking lot, a small church that we have up the road here, small church parking lot in said red van overnight. I get the I finally get the kids settled down enough, bathed and put into bed. I also and I also had to get them get them dinner too in the meantime. So the next day, pardon me, I don't know where these burps are coming from. So the next day, I um got I got them up, got them dressed, got them fed. And got them onto the school bus. About nine o'clock, my husband, you know, I call my husband and tell him, okay, you can come back home now. I just wanted to be at 100% sure that, you know, that the kids were out of the house and nothing was going, you know, they weren't coming back because he wasn't allowed in the house with them. So he comes back, gets, gets a shower, gets dressed, gets, a, gets some food. 
and um, social service worker came over and visited us about 12 o'clock. And we had our conversation with her, which I kept my mouth shut. My husband did all the talking because my dad had taught me from the time when I was just an itty bitty little thing to never talk to anyone in law enforcement that includes social service workers without a lawyer present. Okay. Do not talk to the cops. Do not even don't talk to social service workers without a lawyer there. Okay. Um, so I kept my mouth shut. So I think that's what kept me from being in trouble. My husband just kept running his mouth. Um, so after, you know, after, after she got got done with us, she's like, okay, well, he's still not allowed here. You know, with the when when the kids get home, he has got to be out of the house when the you know when the kids get back because before the kids get back, because you know, because he's the perpetrator here, not you know, so I was like, okay, fine, whatever. So I made sure he was gone and and he gave me, and at the time we were on food stamps. So he left, gave me the food stamps card, left, kids got off the bus, and I said, okay, well, we do need to go get groceries. So I loaded them up into my minivan, and we went to the grocery store. And I was like, okay, and on, and on the way to the grocery store, I remember asking the kids, you guys want pizza for supper tonight? Well, then what? You know what? Kid isn't going to say, yay, pizza. So I figured, okay, special treat. We'll get pizza and soda. So um, amongst everything else that I had to get. So I went to the grocery store. I got, you know, I went to the grocery store, got, got the, uh, got the groceries, came back home. And as soon as I got all the groceries out of the car, as soon as I got all the kids into the house, as soon as I got all the groceries put away, even, you know, that cop knock, I was like, Oh God, what now? So I go and open the door, and there's a social service worker with a couple of cops. We need to take your kids away. We, we need to, to, to take your kids away. And I was like, what? And this was on a Wednesday. Okay, and that's and that will be important here in a minute. It was on a Wednesday. And um, I was like, wait a minute. Why are you taking the kids? And I was talking to – oh, and I was also talking to my dad on the phone, too. So I was – I don't know why I was talking to him. He called me, so I can't remember what the frig the conversation was about. Something, you know, it was about what 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 was happening, and um, I wish I'd hung up from my from my dad at this point. I wish I had, but I didn't, because my dad made me read, and I said, "Do you guys have a warrant or or anything?" They're like, "Well, we have this affidavit." So I read it to my dad and he's like, well, no, they have the right to take the kids. I wish I had, I wish I would have said, wait, I need to call my husband. I wish I had said that, but I didn't. They took the kids and I was bawling, crying in the, and I'm pretty sure the social service worker was wondering why. And I'm pretty sure the cops were wondering why I was bawling and crying. I mean, cause I mean, just gotten them back, you know, last, you know, the night before I just gotten them back from that, you know, so they didn't know what was going on. I mean, I remember filming them and asking them, do you guys feel safe here at home? And all of them said, well, we better do what, what the social service worker says we have to do. Which gets my husband and I to think, and even to this day, that they had come and visited them while they were at school that day. But that's neither here nor there uh, anymore. But it was part, you know. So as soon as they left, I called my husband and I, you know, and I was crying and I was like, they took, they, they took the kids. My husband, now remember I told you it was Wednesday. Okay. We were going to church at the time and my husband was at, at the Wednesday night church meeting. And, um, I, but it wasn't really time for it to start yet. So I had called him up, told him that. And I was like, well, the kids are gone. I guess I could come over and, and see you. He's like, yes, please do. You know, he's like, do, or I'll basically, it's like, just do what you, do what you think, you know, is, is right. So I got in the car and I called and it was, God 
damn was it windy that day. Holy hell. You guys think you have wind in whatever cities you guys live in. But my God. With the farmers cutting down the trees here in this part of Nebraska, that wind was blowing like crazy. And I remember my dad was blowing up my phone, too. Not this one, but he was blowing up my cell phone every few minutes. You know, and I just kept telling him, Dad, I can't talk right now. And he's like, why are you with Nathan? I was like, no, I'm on the road. The wind is blowing really, really bad. I need to concentrate. Click. Two minutes later, are you are, are you in a safe spot to talk yet? No, I'm not. I'm still trying to drive to Columbus. 45-minute drive, 60 miles, and I'm, and I'm going about 50, so it's going to take me some time to get there because of the effing wind. You know, and I just kept on yelling at him. And he's like, Megan, are you sure you're... I'm like, Dad, I'm fine. Just let me get to where I'm going. I will call you as soon as I get calmed down and and everything. So I get to the... um. So I get get to Wednesday night meeting. Have, we have the meeting. We go out for ice cream afterwards. um, Just so we could talk. You know, and, 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 nobody, and everybody was with Nathan and I. You know, my... My mom, my dad, my sister were against us. Um, but my, but everybody in the church and everybody that had known us for the past ten years, actually now it's going to going on to fifteen years now. That had known us since basically we moved here to Nebraska, were with us. You know, they're like, no, what these cops. What everybody did was just basically wrong. So we um so we get you know so we get court appointed lawyers, um, uh, which we actually got really two really good lawyers, um, and they really hated the uh, county attorney here here in Merrick County. So they so we're like, yes, you know, at least we got people that, you know, that, that don't like, let me move my mouse, that don't like the uh, county attorney because we didn't like her and we had heard some nasty things about her. We, um, so, so yeah, so it was basically just a struggle to, to get the kids back. Um, the only way I could get them to come back home was in December of 2012. My husband had to move out and the sad thing was it was on his birthday, um, and they had to, he had to move out and I figured it'd be about a month, two, maybe three at the latest, you know, I was kind of thinking of maybe three months at the latest, but you know, I was like, this would probably be on, be only a month. And his lawyer at the time thought it'd be only a month too, but they just kept on pushing it back, pushing it back, pushing it back. And where he was staying at was basically a shack at his boss's place. His boss wasn't even nice enough to offer him, you know, a room inside the house. No, it was a shack, but at least it was a place for him to stay. But, you know, and also his boss took advantage of, of the fact, oh, he's always here, so I can work up to the bone. But, yeah. So, he didn't get to come home until May or June of twenty of 2013 and we got the uh we got my husband was tried it was tried as a criminal and was tried as you know, basically just a civ civil case uh, we won basically the civil case we lost the criminal case um but um so yes yeah, so my husband is now now has to register as a felon he had to, you know, get a fingerprint, picture taken, the whole nine yards or whatever you have to do to whatever you do when you're when you're a felon. My name got dragged through the mud and I got it taken out, taken off the registry by going to um <laughs> by going to counseling, which thank God we chose the counselor that we did because we have like almost a thousand hours or two thousand hours. Let's just say it was it was like, you know, up there, almost 10,000 hours, I think, with with this counselor. And uh, we couldn't use her in the criminal case because um, because the county attorney thought she'd become too familiar with us and that she was basically biased. And then, of course, she's going to say stuff that's nice in our favor. But this, but this counselor that we chose was on the 
child develop was on the child abuse detection board or something. She was basically specially trained to ask questions to where she to where she could figure out if someone was abusive to said children. Which um she, you know, which she said, no, these guys are not abusive to their children at all. So yeah, so that's what so then we get, you know, we get the we get both both things taken care of in 2014 by the, by the time everything gets said and done. 2015 rolls around. We got that done, taken care of in August of 2014. March, so sorry, February slash March of 2015 comes around. And we go through the same thing all over again. Only this time... My autistic daughter was taken out of the house, not the other three. And um, and the reason she was taken out was because my husband, according to her, which nobody actually believed her, but according to her, my husband hit her so hard upside the head that she got dizzy and fell down. Hey, Armageddon! Ah! My buddy! I love you! Oh my God, we need a two. Ah, oh, it just sucks that we lit that you live in Canada and I live in the U.S. I'd love to get together with you and have tea or coffee or something. Down a beer together. <laughs> oh, now you cannot tell me that you do not drink. Come on, you cannot tell me you do not have a beer occasionally. You've done drunk streams, okay? I've watched your videos. Um, so where was I? Yeah, in 20 Yeah, so my daughter, my autistic daughter says that um my dad my husband, her dad, you know, hit her so hard upside the head she got dizzy and fell down. No, you're fine, Armageddon. 100 percent fine. I'm just Telling the story as to why I was gone for so long. Mixed drinks. Yes, I love those. I love mixed drinks, too. I think those are actually the best. They have the most flavor. Oh, this was back in 2015. She was not hurt at all. I do believe it was just a cop out so that she could so that she could get out of the house. Um, you're going to have to watch the uh, video the live stream from from the start to hear it. But um it was basically the court case that I was involved in from 2012 to 2015. Um so so basically what our lawyers thought was was stupid this time around was that they only took out they only took the cops only took my autistic daughter away and not the other three because if they're because in their eyes what they thought and what normally does happen was if there if there's actually a case of child abuse to any one child all the children get taken out yeah that's why i disappeared for so long was because of this friggin friggin court case yeah i mean and it, it drained energy it drained time and I just wasn't ready to tell people as to why I uh, disappeared for so long until now. Because it's therapeutic. Nobody likes to talk about it. My mom doesn't like to talk about it. My dad doesn't like to talk about it. My stepmom doesn't like to talk about it. My grandma will talk about it occasionally. But I think she knows when to talk about it so that it doesn't trigger my depression. I wouldn't be surprised if if I have PTSD because of this too. I need a I really need to go talk to a counselor and ask if I do have PTSD. I know I have anxiety and depression because of it. And there are times where I will look out where if I'm like here in my bedroom doing stuff, I will look outside occasionally through my kids' bedroom window. And see if there is a cop car or something that pulled up in pulled up in you know in front of our house. I'm paranoid too. I know I'm paranoid. 
So I really do need to go talk to a counselor to see if I have PTSD. I know I'm depressed and I know I got anxiety and I know I'm paranoid. In fact, you know, I even told our lawyers that. And here's what sucks. Bus just came and dropped off the kids. And they're in. So, yeah, so basically we went off on our lawyers one day, one day as to, you know, because this is what really sucks. You get, okay, my husband had a third cousin who had his kids taken away because their house was basically, they had farm animals living in that house. It was, uh, they had kids in three, four day old diapers. Basically the house smelt really, really of dead, of basically shit, vomit, you know, um, and the cops, when they went in there, they found dead animals wrapped inside blankets. So, but he got his kids taken away for about a month and then, oh, here they are back. Yeah, that is awful. But they got their kids taken away for about a month and, you know, here they are back. Um, the case prior, which is what we were basically still bitching about because we had the same lawyers again this time around, was that, okay, how come people like that can get their kids back within a few weeks? But then good, honest to God people like my husband and myself, we get our kids taken away for months, maybe even years on end. How is that fair? That is not fair at all in the slightest. So basically what you're saying is people who have kids are already fucked up in the head. They're already going to be miserable. They're already going to be burdens on society. They can get their kids back within a few weeks. and Everything's fine. But if you have people that are, that are, you know, good citizens, you get your kids taken away. The first time in 2012 I got my we got our kids taken away was because my autistic daughter was told by my husband because I was in call because I was in college at the time studying to be a certified nurse's assistant um to clean up the bedroom. Now Armageddon, when you were growing up, did your mom ever tell you to clean up your toys? Did your mom ever tell you there's clothes on the ground? Would you please put them in the hamper or please take them to the laundry room? I do not know. No, here, hold on. Yeah, all the time. Hello? Are you a recorded voice or are you an actual person? Are you an actual person? Or am I talking to a robot? Would you like to get information on extending your uh, car warranty? Our cars are used when we bought when we buy them, but they have no warranties. Um, so yeah, so basically that's what so that's what happened. And my youngest and my autistic daughter didn't want to pick up her toys, so she threw one of them at my youngest daughter. The block hit her on the side of the head, came really close to hitting her on the temple, actually. And my husband just basically spanked her butt. I grew up having my butt spanked. I'm still alive. I'm still a functioning member of society. But any more these days you spank your kids, you're basically causing them harm. So, <laughs> so that's why in 2012 we got them taken away. But we got all four of them taken away at that time. In 2015, I don't know what happened. Both times, I don't know what happened. This was just hearsay as to what happened. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you're being um, serious or not there, Armageddon time. 
I grew up spoiled too, but I did get my ass whooped. I got my ass whooped with a belt all the effing time. And I got my ass whooped with a fly swatter too. Well, let me tell you, I'm getting things that was the 80s. In 90s, you knew you knew some of your friends who got their asses but who got their asses whooped with belts or hands or with a fly swatter, and I can guarantee you that they're basically functioning members of society who know respect. Um, but in 2015, uh, what I heard because I was at work at the time, I came home and I was like, okay, how was your day? Because you know, the kids greeted me, hugs, kisses, you know, you know how kids gr greet. Greet their parents. Hugs, kisses. Yeah, just different parody styles, which is fine. I'm not, you know. I can tell when a kid, though, does need, does need to be spanked. Like, if they're screaming at the top of their lungs at Walmart, I'm like, just take them out to the car and spank them. <laughs> but, um. But, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure you knew how to act in, in polite society, though. If you went out... To whatever with with your parents, whether it was to a movie, out to eat, out to grandma's house, out to your aunt's house, wherever, you knew you didn't misbehave. Because I'm pretty sure you got disciplined or punished in some different ways. Yeah. Because I knew um, I knew some friends whose parents, all they had to do was give them the eye. And you know what the eye, the eye, like that look. <laughs> so I'm uh, getting off on a tangent here. So basically what I heard when I came back, you know, after my kids gave me hugs, kisses, yay, mom, you're home, was, um, was, you know, was that Danny got, <laughs> sometimes that's all it takes too, because you don't ever want to know what's after that booming voice. So I got told that my autistic daughter um, got in trouble. I didn't ask why she got in trouble because, I mean, God, it could be a list of things for her as to why she got in trouble. Because I'll tell you, she's autistic. Um, so, yeah, so I just, yeah, she, she got in trouble. I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go start dinner. The next day, we, um, the next day. <laughs> My, I had the day off. My husband had to go to his, um, where on the spectrum is she? The autistic spec, the autism spectrum, please. Images. I can tell you that here in a minute, Armageddon. I just need to find the tree. Holy hell. The autism spectrum. Holy hell. Where is it? I used to be able to find this so friggin' easy. I know you're just curious, and I want to tell you exactly where, where she's at. This used to be, like, so easy to find. <laughs> Pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified. That is what she got diagnosed as. So... So, yeah, so, yeah, that is, um, yeah, high-functioning autistic, you're fine. 
She's a high functioning autistic. That's all I know. Um, she she is very smart in certain areas and kind of slow in others, which basically is, I think is normal for anybody else. But but yeah, but that's um that's where she, that's where she is, and um. Yes, yeah, so they so we get to so the cop. So we go out the next day. My husband had to go for his uh, probation that he got put on in 2014. Okay, he had to go see a counselor. So we went and saw a counselor the next day. I had the day off. So um, I went to went to see the counselor with him, um, and then we went out to eat as normal. And then, <coughs> and at the time, our kids, our three older, our three other kids, we put in private schooling, thinking that that would be better for them. It wasn't. But we went and picked them up from school. And then we had, and then while we were waiting for them to get out of school, we get a phone call from the sheriff's department, wondering where the hell we are. They've never, ever called us. Okay. And I was like, well, we're, I was like, well, we had, no, 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 no. We got a call from my husband's lawyer. And she says, where the hell are you? And I say, well, we're picking up the kids from school. Where did you expect us to be? And she's like, well, the cops are looking for you. I was like, why are the cops looking for us? She's like, well, just go over to the sheriff's department. They'll explain everything. So after we pick up the other three from private schooling, we go down to the sheriff's department. My husband goes in and goes, okay, and goes, you've been looking for us? And he's like, yeah, you kind of hard people to keep track of. It's like, well, we have cell phones. Um, so, yeah, they never tried to call us. Um, so we, um, so my, so we sit there for about an hour and I look at the time. It's like it's four o'clock. It's like I go in and I say, "Look, I need to talk to my husband." They're like, "Well, you're not allowed to talk to him while while he's being questioned." I'm like, "What do you mean he's being questioned? I need to go. I need to talk to him for like five minutes." I mean, God, cops can be such jerks. Um. So, so they finally let me go talk to him. I was like, "Look, I gotta go pick up our artistic daughter from home." And bring her here. He's like, okay, fine. I figured you had already done that. Anyways, like, no, I didn't know how long you'd be here. I didn't think it'd be an hour. So um, I went and picked picked her up. So I went and pick, picked her up from home. And I said, no, you're leaving your backpack here. Um, I mean, it was just like maybe minutes that I missed the bus. And so I picked her up. Told her to leave her backpack at home. And uh, we went back back to the sheriff's office. Waited for my husband for another 30, 45 minutes. He comes out and says, yeah, they need to take Danny. What? I was pissed. I kept on asking, okay, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? You know? And, I, and finally, what got them to actually listen to me I actually got the cops listed to me was if you don't tell me what's going on, I'm taking all four of my kids and I'm going home right this minute. And they're like, okay, what happened was your daughter came to school today and said that your husband hit her upside the head. Really? Cause this is the first time I've heard of it, lady. That's what I said. This is, I said, that's the first time I've heard of it. She didn't tell me a damn thing. She was fine as I was getting her ready for school in the morning. She sat perfectly still while I did her hair, which A is kind of unusual, but I think but I thought, oh, maybe she finally just got the hint and that she's supposed to sit still while someone fixes her hair. Yeah, they can. So we got her taken away, and my husband and I afterwards we sat down and basically had a talk. With a with a social service worker, which is the same social service worker we had the very first, you know, back in 2012, 13, and 14. Um, we sat down and us three talked about it because we trusted her a hell of a whole lot. 
Yeah, I know. I wonder how many people, how many good people have had their artistic kids taken away because their artistic kids basically just spits shit out. Um, but, you know, like I said, we had just gotten done with the, with the case in 2014, in August of 2014. So what well, that's October, November, December, January, January, March, what, six, five, six months. So we were sick and tired of this. We were sick and tired of being in the court system. Sort of like, look, as much as it pains us, and I mean, my husband and I, we cried the night we decided, we decided this. We cried and cried. I mean, I'm, I, my husband hardly ever cries. I cry a lot. My husband hardly ever cries. <laughs> um, oh, my God, something else I need to tell you, uh, tell you guys after after this too, but, um, but we basically just said, look, we're just going to put her up for adoption. So we did because we were sick and tired of being put through the court system. And we knew exactly what was going to follow again this time. It was going to be like another four years, three to four years again of jumping through the hoops of the health and human service of the department of health and human services. Um, so it was just, we didn't want to jump through hoops again. We had just got gotten done jumping through hoops. <coughs> so, yeah, so I'm down to three kids now instead of four. And which is why now I'm like hyper vigilant of how the kids look, how the kids act. There are some times I will tell the kids to talk back to the school. Some days where I'm like, no, pick and choose your battles. Um, so, yeah, so because of this stuff, I become hyper aware, too, I think, of everything that's going on around me. I'm, like, really, really scared of when the kids go to school some days. That's something will be a miss, especially if, they, especially if it's, like, a day, especially, like, the night before if the kids have been fighting with each other. You know kids will fight. So siblings will fight fight with each other. I mean, come on, I got bru I got scars for when my sister and I fought growing up. I like how when my one brother died at five years. It's like oh, it's like how when my one brother died at five years, my parents doubled down on me and my other brother. Yes. You just become hyper aware. You just like, you know, watching everything. And I mean, I've seeing as my eldest is in is a sophomore in high school now, and I got my youngest daughter, my son is in eighth grade, my youngest daughter's in sixth grade. I've calmed down a little because now it's like, well, okay. Because when they were in elementary school, I was really hyper aware, but now that they're in junior high and high school, I'm like, okay, the teacher's just gonna look at them and go, well. It's your own fault that you didn't brush your hair. And they do that. And they do and they do that. Well, you know what? You're old enough to do your own laundry. You're old enough to brush your own hair. You're old enough to take your own showers. Your parents shouldn't have to tell you this. You're old enough to do your homework by yourself now. Your parents don't need to help you. So I'm a little bit calm. You know, I'm not as self, I'm not as vigilant, but I'm still a little bit vigilant. And this one will probably get your blood boiling, Armageddon. Okay. 2013, January of 2013, my niece passed away at six years old. This was while my husband was kicked out of the house. This was, this happened while we were going through everything the first time. My niece died. And, um... She died because I think she was given too much medication for the cold and flu that she had to, that, that she caught while she was, um, you know, you know, kids get sick. Everybody gets sick. And, you know, it's just that strain of flu that was going around back in 20, back in 2013. We had to fight in order to get to go to her friggin' funeral. We had to fight with. With our lawyers, we had to fight with with the uh, social services. We had to fight 
Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry. Because they said that only one of us could go to the friggin' funeral. Because my husband was under, um, my husband can only have supervised visitations with the kids. Oh, shut up. So, um, this was computer. Um, so yeah, my husband was under supervised visitations and if, if, and there was nobody available to watch him during the funeral time, but we fought. I called my lawyer every day. My husband called his lawyer every day. I called social services. I called my, our social service worker every day. And we finally found someone who could fit a couple hours at night into their time so that we could go to the funeral. The funeral was, I think, at, no. It was an all-day thing. The funeral was an all-day thing because, I mean, we had to rent out. We couldn't have it at a normal funeral house. We had to rent out the, um, the we had to rent out the fairgrounds. At the, um, yeah, so he, in the court size, he needed to be supervised. And, um, he couldn't be alone with the kids. Okay. Because that's just what happens when, that's just precaution as to, you know, if your kids get, uh, if your kids go to school or someone calls in and says that you're being abusive to them, the first thing they do is they take is that they take them away and then you can only see them during supervised visits. <coughs> no, 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 no. He's not a bad person. Don't get me wrong. Okay, he's not a bad person. But you got to remember, this was his niece. I'm only the aunt through marriage. Okay, this is his niece by blood. Um, and of course you, you would think that you should be able to go to any funeral you want to, if they're, you know, if it's like your best friend, your grandma, your grandpa, your mom, your dad, your sister, your cousins, whoever, you have the right to go to their funeral. Awesome. <laughs> I love you, Armageddon. Oh, I wish we were closer. Um, one of these years. Yeah, but when the, but when the law is, a, yes, exactly. It's a whole different can of worms when the, um, law is involved. And, but like I said, we finally found, we finally found someone who was able to supervise us, to supervise my husband. Um, after, you know, so, so that we could go, go to the funeral. The funeral was like at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. And, um, and it lasted all freaking day. It was a whole day ordeal. We rented out the fairgrounds here in a town called Aurora, Nebraska. We had to rent out the fairgrounds because we couldn't fit everybody into a funeral home. It was good fellowship, too. But I noticed that after the funeral, the case took a took a different turn. At least the civil case took a different turn toward, to where we basically won the civil case. My husband lost the criminal trial, but um, we won the civil case, basically. <sighs> But yeah, so that's basically from 2012 to, to 2015. That's why I was gone for so long. And then I just I just couldn't think of what... Yeah, he got charged as a criminal. He's like the lowest form of criminal that there is. That class 3 felony child abuse. That's like really, really low here in the United States on the uh, spectrum of being a criminal. He's very, he's on like one of the lower rungs, but, um, he did complete what he had to do. Yes. Travel is hard. At least it was at the time he had to have papers from his probation officer to travel. 
But since he, since he completed his probation, I think traveling is easier for him now. He just chooses not to. He'd just rather not leave Nebraska right now. You know, me, me, myself, and I, I'm free to travel wherever I want. So, and by the way, no news yet on Shopco. They called me at about, here, let's see, phone. They called me at about 8.19 on the 30th here a couple days ago. And close, so basically, yeah, 9.20 at 8.20 at night, my time, Central Standard Time, they called me for the interview. So I'm expecting a call back around that time, probably, for my background check. You don't know where Nebraska is. Okay, I know you have a map. I know you have Google Maps. Just look it up. Um, if you know where North and South Dakota is, then Nebraska is right under South Dakota. Hey, if you could travel whenever come to... Yes. Yes, I am wanting to go to Canada. I have some people I want to meet that are that are in Canada. You are one of them, Army Gideon. Like I said, we should go out and have some drinks if we ever get a chance to meet up. Yeah, so that yeah, that would be so much fun. I mean, I got I got friends all over the world. I, I'm wanting to meet. I got I got a lot of friends in England actually that I want to meet. Um, you know, that would be like so much fun. I would love to go to Minecon and meet a lot of the um, and meet meet a lot of the uh, hermit craft, the hermits from Hermitcraft. I, I my husband and I just have this list of shit that we would love that we, that we would love to do. The only, the only reason I'm waiting on that call is just for them to say, yeah, orientation is on this day. So, I mean, I probably could call them now. Probably should. But anyway, my kids came home. I need to go see what they're up to. Need to find out how their day was and um, get stuff going for tonight. Yeah, ah, uh, I've been to Missouri. It's really um hot down there during the summers. I should say, really hot. Probably why people call it misery instead of Missouri. But I need to go check on the kids. They came home. I know I always look great, don't I? So, um, I'll catch y'all later. Bye.